This is going to be some things that people do not believe about God. Number one, they don't believe He exists. There are people who don't even believe there is a God. Even though some of them believe a higher power created them, they don't believe it was God. Psalms 14 and verse 1 says, The fool has said in his heart, There is no God. The trouble with the atheist is in his heart. He says, In his heart, there is no God. You know how you get saved? You believe on the Lord Jesus Christ in your heart. It's not asking him into your heart. It's believing. Romans 10 and verse 10 says, For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Even though God has given evidence of his existence all around us and the stars, the oceans, the trees, the animals, and the list goes on. Romans 1.20 says, For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. So the atheist is without excuse when he gets to the great white throne judgment and Jesus Christ says, Why didn't you believe in me? He won't have any excuse. The atheist will ask him why he didn't reveal himself more. And the Lord will answer his question with another question that the atheist won't be able to answer. Read the Gospels and see how when the Pharisees ask Jesus a question, he responds with another question that they can't answer. But atheists have a heart problem. Their foolish heart is darkened. College professors who brainwash students into atheists have a darkened, foolish heart. The Bible talks about these professors with unbelieving hearts in Romans 121. Right after the verse we just read in Romans 121, it says, Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God. Neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Verse 22, Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. They think they are so smart, but yet they're so stupid. They don't want to believe in God because they want to be their own God. They want to do what is right in their own eyes because they are lovers of their own self. The Bible talks about in the last days, men will be lovers of their own self. They want to be their own God and their own final authority. And a lot of Christians ain't doing any better because they want to correct the Bible to fit their doctrine or their denomination. And when they do this, they become their own final authority. But I claim Romans 3 and verse 4, which says, And let God be true, but every man a liar. How could you not believe in God? You believe all this stuff you see comes from nothing? If you say it had to come from something, then why wouldn't that something or someone be God? It's because you want to live like a dirty sinner and do what you want to do all the time. These are the same people who invent things like the after school Satan club and the blasphemy challenge. These are the same people that want to believe that there is no God and do what they want to do. They want to be their own final authority. But people who do believe in God, they don't believe he gets angry. People don't believe that God gets angry. They think a loving God has to be sweet and gentle all the time and let you act how you want to act and sin how you want to sin. For God to be a loving God, he has to hate sin. He would have to get angry at sin. If God doesn't get angry with a rapist, would he really love the person who was raped? If God doesn't get angry with a drunk, does he really love the person who just got killed because of drunk driving? Psalms 85.4 says, Turn us, O God of our salvation, and cause thine anger toward us to cease. Get on e-sword or sword searcher and type in the word provoke and see how the majority of the verses talks about someone provoking the Lord to anger. God manifested himself in the flesh as Jesus Christ and Jesus got angry at times. Jesus was sinless but yet he got angry. 
It's actually a sin not to get angry when you should be angry. Ephesians 4.26 says, Be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Jesus got mad enough at times to knock over furniture in Matthew 21.12. Jesus is the one who said in Matthew 23.33, Ye serpents, ye generation of vipers, how can ye escape the damnation of hell? He called people names and everything else. Did you know God gets angry enough to kill? Genesis 38.7 says, and Ur, Judah's firstborn, was wicked in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord slew him. Then in verse 10 of the same chapter, he killed Ur's brother Onan also. God gets angry at sin, and that is why Jesus said, Go and sin no more. He didn't say, It's okay, I'm dying for it anyway. Go ahead and fornicate and get drunk and live like the devil. He said, Go and sin no more. Deuteronomy 32.22 says, For a fire is kindled in mine anger, and shall burn into the lowest hell. People in hell are feeling the anger of God. The book of Jude talks about angels that are present tense suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. God said, Vengeance is mine, I will repay. If God is getting vengeance, then he's angry. He's angry with some people. Ever heard the saying, Jesus is coming back, and boy, is he mad? I'd hate to be a God-hater at the second coming. I'd hate to be a Christ-rejecting sinner when Jesus comes back at the Advent. Because read this description on the second Advent in Revelation 19, 11 through 15. It says, And I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. Christians nowadays don't believe God gets angry because their idea of Christianity is Medea and Tyler Perry. They thought Tyler Perry laying hands on T.D. Jakes and speaking in tongues was like a mighty move of God. Don't you know those people are just in it for filthy lucre and all these prosperity preachers, TV preachers, they're just in it for money. And they're always preaching the love of God to deceive people. They don't want you to believe that God is a God of wrath. Uh, John 3.36 says, He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life, and he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. If you want out of the wrath of God, then get under the blood. Jesus Christ shed his blood and paid the price for our sins. Another thing people don't believe, they don't believe he revealed himself in the flesh as Jesus Christ. 1 Timothy 3.16 says, And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. It's a mystery how God came down as Jesus Christ. So you can't completely understand it, but you can't deny it. The Bible plainly teaches Jesus Christ is God. Jesus claimed to be God. He said, before Abraham was, I am. John 5.18 says, therefore the Jews sought the more to kill him, because he not only had broken the Sabbath, but said also that God was his father, making himself equal with God. Jesus made himself equal with God. He knew he was God. Philippians 2.6 says, Who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Paul knew Jesus was God. In Romans he says, And declared to be the Son of God with power, according to the Spirit of Holiness by the resurrection from the dead. By Paul saying that Jesus Christ was the Son of God, he was making Jesus Christ equal with God. The modern perversions of the Bible 
love to attack these verses and make it seem like Jesus ain't God. That's why it's okay to burn them with your rock CDs, Playboys, Hustler magazines, and porn collection. Because I have more respect for Hugh Hefner than someone who is a Bible corrector who holds the truth and unrighteousness and professes to be wise enough to change what God said in his book. He's a pervert. I wouldn't trust a Bible corrector when it comes to the Bible, just like I wouldn't trust a Catholic priest to be a Boy Scout leader. Having somebody like James White as a Sunday school teacher is like having a NAMBLA member as a boys t-ball coach. The NAMBLA, or whatever it is, is the North American Man-Boy Love Association. And these Bible correctors pervert the scriptures just like all these other perverts do all this stuff. So don't let these Bible correctors make you uh, lose your belief in the words of God. They must not know how God magnified his word in Psalms 138.2. It says, I will worship toward thy holy temple and praise thy name for thy loving kindness and for thy truth. For thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name. It says he magnified his word above all thy name. The cults don't believe Jesus is God. They believe he was just a good teacher or a good prophet. And they are a bunch of antichrists. 1 John 2.22 says who is a liar, but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ. He is any Christ that denieth the Father and the Son. God the Father called Jesus Christ God in Hebrews. Are you claiming to not call Jesus Christ God when God himself called Jesus Christ God? I guess that means you are your own God. Or the devil is your God directly or indirectly through whatever God it is you're worshiping. Hebrews 1.8 says, But unto the Son he saith, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. So Paul says Jesus is God. Jesus proclaimed himself to be God, and God himself said Jesus Christ is God. So there's a lot of authority behind that doctrine. And all the major and essential things about Jesus Christ are what gets attacked the most. His virgin birth, his deity, his sinlessness, his resurrection. And Hollywood wants to make him a hippie who was okay with everything. While a lot of Christians want to make him just like they are with short hair and a shaved face and a suit and tie. But Jesus isn't just like we are. Jesus did have long hair and a beard. If he didn't have long hair, he sinned according to Leviticus 19.27, which says, Ye shall not round the corners of your heads, neither shalt thou mar the corners of thy beard. But should a man have long hair today? Read what Paul said about how it is a shame for a man to have long hair. You have to rightly divide. But some Christians are in such a hurry to get rid of long hair, they will say Jesus had short hair. Men with long hair will use Jesus as an excuse to keep their rebellious long hair. They are doing it for, for rebellion, not so they can be like Jesus. Why don't they do all the other stuff Jesus did like preach and read his Bible and pray and fast? I can't stand it when a person uses Jesus as an excuse to sin. Miranda Lambert says in her dumb song, Jesus drank wine so we would get along just fine. And I'd hate to get to the judgment having used Jesus as an alibi for sin when Jesus never drank wine to begin with. The only time the Bible says Jesus drank wine was when his accusers were saying it to slander him. But another thing people don't believe about God is they don't believe God hates some things. It says in Proverbs 6, 16 through 19, These six things doth the Lord hate, yea, seven are an abomination unto him, a proud look, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood, and heart that deviseth wicked imaginations, feet that be swift in running to mischief, a false witness that speaketh lies, and he that soweth discord among brethren. 
some people say just be yourself and keep talking about all this self-confidence and self-esteem stuff but that's stupid advice you shouldn't be yourself you should read the bible and be what god said you should be your heart is wicked and if you be yourself then you're going to sin if you're a proud person don't be yourself the bible says god hates that if you have this habit of picking up the phone and telling your daughter what your cousin said bad about him and causing a fight between a bunch of people god hates that don't be you pray to god that you can have victory over your fleshy desires what you shouldn't be is yourself what you should be is as close to like jesus christ as you can get god hates some things but God also loved you enough to die on the cross for your sins. John 3.16 For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. God hates some things. And it even talks about him hating certain people like Esau and a false witness and he that sows discord. But he loved them enough to die for them. If you want to get in the love of God and out of his wrath, then you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. The moment you believe on Jesus Christ as your Savior, then God will see you as perfect as Jesus Christ. For God to be love, he has to hate some things. He has to hate sin. If God loves everything, then he really doesn't love you. Love hates I don't believe a street preacher should go around with signs saying God hates fags and all that junk. That's ridiculous. People like the Westboro Baptist Church focus on the hate of God while the mega churches focus on the love of God only. But a Bible believer realizes he has to have a balanced view. God hates some things, but God also loves and loved you enough to die for you. And another thing people don't believe about God is they don't believe he is coming back again. 2 Peter 3, 3 through 4 says, Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last day scoffers walking after their own lusts and saying, Where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. People have listened to Harold Camping and date setters so much that they don't even believe Jesus Christ is coming back. They think it's a joke. They think they have to bring in the kingdom. They think things are just going to get better and better and they are going to bring it in. Things are actually getting worse and worse just like the Bible said it would. Evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Jude 1 and 14 says, And Enoch also the seventh from Adam prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints. Jesus Christ is coming back at the end of the time of Jacob's trouble. He is going to cast the Antichrist and false prophet into the lake of fire and slay all the God-haters with a sharp two-edged sword that proceeds out of his mouth. It's not going to be a pretty sight. The blood is going to get deep up to the horse's bridles. Uh, people like Joel Osteen would never preach this. If he did, then he would have Jesus coming back on My Little Pony or something. And he won't have him in a white horse out of heaven like those horses of fire that took Elijah up. He wouldn't have his garments dyed red with blood like the Bible says either. Maybe clothed in a vesture dipped in glitter or something. But he's not going to say Jesus is coming back clothed in a vesture dipped in blood because he's too positive. Just like all false prophets are. When Satan tempted Eve in Genesis 3, everything he said was positive. The first thing Satan said was, yes. He said, yea, hath God said. But the most talked about subject in the Bible is the second coming. Do a word search on, in that day, in the Bible, and you will see tons of verses, all on the second advent of Jesus Christ. God's favorite day isn't the day his son died, it's the day he comes back with a vengeance. But people don't believe he's coming back. A lot of people don't believe he's coming back in a pre-time of Jacob's trouble, catching away what most people refer to as the rapture before the tribulation time period.
They aren't looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. They are looking for the Antichrist. According to post-tribbers, Jesus Christ is going to drag his bride through what he calls the worst time the world has ever seen. But not only this, people don't believe that God and the devil work together at times. 2 Samuel 24, 1 says, and, and again the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel, and he moved David against them to say, Go, number Israel and Judah. And then 1 Chronicles 21, 1 says, And Satan stood up against Israel and provoked David to number Israel. People claim this is a contradiction in the Bible, because one verse says God got David to number Israel, and the next verse says, Satan provoked David to number Israel. But it's just proof that God and the devil work so close to, together that you can't tell them apart. Job 2.3 says, And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that feareth God, and escheweth evil, and still he holdeth fast his integrity, although thou movest me against him to destroy him without cause. If you read Job, then you know Satan had to get permission from God before he messed with Job. But in Job 2.3, God said he himself was destroying Job without a cause. God and the devil work together at times, and it is for a purpose and that purpose is to fulfill the will of God and to get things done that God wants done. Psalms 23, 4 says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. The rod is Satan. When a Christian gets out of line, he will use his rod to keep him in line. Moses' rod turned into a serpent in Exodus, and Satan is the crooked serpent. If a Christian stays in sin without confessing it and judging himself, then he will be turned over to Satan for the destruction of the flesh, as the man was in 1 Corinthians. And then Hebrews 12, 6-8 says, For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. If ye endure chastening, God dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the Father chasteneth not? But if ye be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then are ye bastards and not sons. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. So, does a Christian get comfort from the devil, since he is God's rod? Yes, in a way, it's a comfort to know God is going to keep you in line and keep you from destroying your life. He will whip you back in line. The worst thing that can happen to a man is for God to stop dealing with him. I'm glad that God bothers me. I'm glad he just doesn't let me do whatever I want to do like a good atheist and Satanist does. There are consequences for when a Christian sins. The Lord will chastise a Christian when he gets off into sin. And another thing people don't believe about God is they don't believe that God laughs. Psalms 2, 4, and 5 says, He that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh. The Lord shall have them in derision, then shall he speak unto them in his wrath, and vex them in his sore displeasure. Psalms 37, 12, and 13. The wicked plotteth against the just, and gnasheth upon him with his teeth. The Lord shall laugh at him, for he seeth that his day is coming. People laughed at Jesus Christ when he was crucified. Psalms 22, 7 says, all they that see me laugh me to scorn, they shoot out the lip, they shake the head, saying, He trusted on the Lord that he would deliver him, let him deliver him, seeing he delighted in him. But he who laughs last, laughs best. Proverbs one twenty five and 26 says, But ye have set at naught at all my counsel, and would none of my reproof, I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear cometh. When your fear cometh as desolation, and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind. When distress and anguish cometh upon you. People laughed at God. They still laugh at God. They make shows about his son mocking him. Shows like Family Guy mock and laugh at Jesus Christ. One day they are going to get mocked and laughed at.
just like Jesus Christ did. And another thing people don't believe is they don't believe God would put a sinner in hell. Hebrews 9.27 says, And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. Romans 6.23, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Matthew 10.28, And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. God is the one who was able to put you in hell. Matthew 7.23 says, And then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Matthew 25.41 Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. If God let Jesus Christ die on the cross for your sins, then he would let a lost sinner who rejected Jesus Christ go to hell. God won't let a lost sinner in heaven no matter how much he loves them. God is the one who made hell in the first place. He said it was prepared for the devil and his angels. But you go there if you reject Jesus Christ. People say God isn't fair for letting people go to hell. If it isn't fair for people to go to hell, then it isn't fair for Jesus to die for our sins so that th sinners could go to heaven. God is so fair that he even, even made different levels of hell. Deuteronomy 32.22 says, For a fire is kindled in mine anger, and shall burn unto the lowest hell. Matthew 23.14 says, Woe unto you, scribes, Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye devour widows' houses, and for a pretense make long prayer, therefore ye shall receive the greater damnation. Some are going to receive a greater damnation than others. All sins aren't the same, and not everyone deserves the same amount of punishment. But Christ rejecting sinners deserve eternal punishment for eternal sin against an eternal God. But you don't have to go to hell. God revealed himself in the flesh as his son Jesus Christ. He lived a sinless life and died on the cross for your sins. Shedding his blood so that you, do, so that you could have a chance to be saved. He was buried and rose again the third day. And he offers the free gift of salvation to everyone that will believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Putting their faith in him and him alone for salvation. The Bible says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. The Bible says in Acts 16.31, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. The only way out of hell is through the Lord Jesus Christ.